these are last year's palms from Palm Sunday. And you remember that we were not in the church on Palm Sunday. We had, um, we had all the palms delivered here. And then I laid them out in our, from our front door up to the, the Mary Street Chapel in our dining room. And uh, Bobby's here making fire like we do from last year's pumps. Watch your surplus, Bobby. We don't know a fire accident. But we, so last year I made some, some palm wreaths from our eco palms, but these are the palms that are left over from Palm Sunday that we had some of the traditional long palms, stripped palms. Oops. And they are unwieldy, aren't they? Our service for Ash Wednesday begins on page 264 of the Book of Common Prayer. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look. You fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sack, sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see them naked to cover them? and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. 
Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room, and shut the door and pray to your father who in who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you and whenever you fast do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces as so to show others that they are fasting truly i tell you they have received their reward but when you fast put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God of resurrection and life, you bring forth the first green of spring from the dark, cold, damp earth, just as you brought forth Jesus from the darkness of the tomb. Help us to see your coming kingdom, even as we walk in it now, always yearning toward new life in your glory yet to come. Amen. So Sunday after church, Bobby and I burned the palms from last Palm Sunday in the churchyard to make the ash we'll use today. And you remember last Palm Sunday, we were already in full lockdown. So I had the long palms, about a hundred of those, and I had the eco palms. And you remember I made Facebook videos about palm wreaths and, and using folding palm crosses. So I had those left over, stored for this purpose, and Bobby and I made the fire and burned them. And I'll show you that video on Facebook so you'll be able to see. Now I've been an Episcopalian all my life, 
And I grew up in the minority in a community of Roman Catholics, so I'm, I'm used to these questions around Lent. What are you giving up for Lent? What will be your Lenten fast? I've heard and probably asked these questions many, many times over the course of my life. And maybe, like you, I've given up things for Lent. Say I've fasted from coffee or chocolate or sweets or wine. And I wonder was whether this was really what Jesus was up to out in the wilderness during those 40 days and 40 nights of his temptation. And I wonder if I have grown in discipleship over the lengths of my lifetime. Have these disciplines brought me any kind of change? Or is there a different way to think about it? Remember that John the Baptist preached repentance, which in the original Greek of the New Testament is said in the word metanoiate, from which we get the English word metanoia. It means a change in the way you see things, a change in your perspective and your point of view. There are many associated words in the Latin version, the Latin version of metanoiate, in which the Vulgate, the, the, uh, the New Testament that St. Jerome wrote, the, the Vulgate was written, translated, I should say, not wrote. Um, he is Latin, and, and the, the word for that is repentance, and that's where we get John the Baptist's cry, where he says, repent, you brood of vipers. And there are many associated words in English, penalty, punishment, punitive, penal system, and so this word repentance in John the Baptist's cry in our English translation gets people all tied up in those associated punishment words. And we start to think of repentance as punishment like self-denial, abstinence, and even suffering. We think of repentance as stopping doing bad things, right? Rather than seeing and experiencing the world and our relationships in a new way. And sometimes it seems that we need to suffer or give things up for that punishment. Was Jesus suffering in the wilderness during those 40 days and 40 nights? Maybe. Scripture tells us he was tempted. He wrestled with hard ideas like earthly power, ego, control over his future, and obedience to the life he was choosing. But did he give up chocolate? Or more likely in the ancient Near East context, did he give up, say, olives or dates or wine? I'm not sure that was the focal point of Jesus's experience in the wilderness. Even though the Gospels say that he fasted, Jesus was working during that time. Jesus was preparing himself for his own earthly ministry in the wilderness, and Lent is the time that we prepare for our own earthly ministry. What comes next for us after Easter? Ancient Christians prepared for their baptism during Lent. Catechumens, as these adults who wanted to become Christians were called, read scripture and learned about the doctrines of the church to get ready for what it would mean to live in Christian community and to see the world and their relationships in a new way. And after this Lenten period of preparation, they were baptized at Easter. So how do we use Lent to focus and prepare for our earthly ministry, like Jesus and the ancient Christians did. Do we do this by giving up chocolate? Maybe, but not because chocolate is innately bad or sinful or because 
These, it's a pleasure that we need to put aside while we suffer, like Jesus did. Because that would be the punitive sense of repentance instead of the perspective-shifting sense that we get from the original Greek metanoia type. We don't need to give up desserts or sweets or wine because they're bad for us or because God doesn't want us to enjoy ourselves, but we could give up anything that gets in the way of who we want to be as Christians. We can give up things or adopt disciplines that help us focus on our commitment to live as disciples of Jesus and to prepare for the earthly ministry we want to engage. And Jesus tells us how to fast in our reading today, not by suffering and disfiguring our faces so that other people can tell we've given up chocolate or wine or cake, but by focusing our attention on God, because God knows who our best selves are and will help us get there if we pay attention and remove any distractions from our environment. When I think of Lent, I think of one of my favorite Easter hymns, Now the Green Blade Riseth. It was written by John MacLeod Campbell Crum in England in 1926, while Crum was a canon at Canterbury Cathedral. The imagery of Jesus' resurrection in the hymn is drawn directly from John 12, 23. And here it is in the King James Version, which is what Crum used. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man shall, should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. What does a grain of wheat lying in the ground do? It doesn't hibernate. It's not dormant. It's not denying itself the nutrients it needs to become wheat. Instead, it is nourishing itself. It is preparing for its next stage. It is taking on water and nutrients in the soil and sprouting and greening inside its seed sheath. Now the green blade riseth from the buried grain, wheat that in dark earth many days has lain. Love lives again that with the dead has been. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. Lent itself is a season of preparation. We remember Jesus' preparation and prepare for our own earthly ministry by focusing on where Jesus is present in our lives during Lent. We mark the beginning of Lent, this time of preparation, with the mark of the cross on our foreheads in ashes. Interesting that ashes have long been a fertilizer used on crops to make them grow. We wear a cross of ashes to, on our foreheads to remember God's presence among us, nourishing and guiding us. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. The season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, 
because of their notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of d the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice. But you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise.
Kneeling, we pray the litany of penitence on page 267 of the Book of Common Prayer. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, our, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We, we confess, confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess, we confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess, we confess to you, Lord our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess, we confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess, we confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Amen. Your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of your resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given that they may turn for the commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe in his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us the true repentance in his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him, which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life may hereafter be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, warmly and warmer at home, Please greet your neighbors at a distance and exchange the peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite all of you to come to Emmanuel Church on Wednesday, February 17th, Ash Wednesday. And if you come by the church between 12 and 1, I'll be outside and ready to impose ashes on your foreheads. The ashes have been made, as you saw in the beginning of the service, from a fire out in the courtyard. Bobby Gaines and I burned last year's palms from Palm Sunday. And then the ashes were mixed with sweet nard that you'll remember that the woman with the alabaster jar spilled over Jesus' feet before the week of the Passion. 
They've been mixed with sweet nard from Jerusalem, blessed by the Archbishop of Jerusalem, Archbishop Suhail Dewani. And, and you, can, you can smell the sweet nard when you get your ashes, but please come by the church and I'll be here waiting for you.